What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, that burning question, that burning topic that a lot of people want to know, but a lot of people aren't willing to give you the truth. A lot of people aren't willing to show you exactly what it takes. Today, we're going to talk about what you would need to do to get on staff with a company. What are they looking for? What kind of a social media presence do you need to have? I'm going to show you some of these things and some of the tricks that I use here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, real quick, guys, right now, hit that like button for me. I need to push this around. We need to hit the like button. We need to subscribe. Comment below. Comment below the types of reviews that you like. Do you like the reviews on video where people are, you know, being real detailed? Do you like the ones where they're showing all strikes? Or do you like reviews like mine that are real honest and uncut? What, what do you prefer when it comes to that? Let me know in the comments below. All right, welcome back, y'all. So... Daniel Farish, a friend of mine, actually made a post earlier talking about how uh, some people, some of these staffers need to uh, proofread some of their posts before they actually put them up when they're talking about bowling balls and all that. And I made a simple comment on there. All I said was, most of these staffers do nothing for these companies. It's true. Unfortunately, most staffers that are on staff shouldn't be on staff. You know, because if I'm if I'm running a company, if I'm looking at these things... I'm not looking at people in areas where, you know, oh, okay, well, we're just going to throw this person on staff because we don't have anybody throwing our bowling balls out there. You know, he's shot a couple of honor scores and stuff. No, I don't care about that. That doesn't sell bowling balls. I, I don't really know what kind of research goes into this stuff, but I can go based on what I've seen in areas, what I know sells balls and what I know doesn't sell bowling balls. Because let's be honest, that's the main thing that these companies are focused on are the bowling ball sales sell a bunch of bowling balls. Most times people that support those bowling balls are going to also buy the bags, the shoes, the stuff that matches those companies. A lot of times people are very loyal to specific brands. You know, I know a lot of staff or non-staff people who throw only specific brands, especially Motive. Like Motive is Michigan made right here in Michigan. I know a lot of people that only throw Motive. They're not on staff, but they like the fact that it's made in Michigan and they want to support that. Nothing wrong with that. So what do people need to do to get on staff? Well, first of all, you've got to have a social media presence. you got to have a social media presence. If you don't have some kind of a social media presence, you're kind of screwing yourself. You know what I mean, Or you're of very little value. In today's age, you've got to have some kind of a presence. Now, that doesn't mean you've got to have tons and tons of followers, but you've got to show that people are willing to listen to you. One of the things that I would suggest is being very careful about some of the posts that you make. Um, the first thing you should do is obviously create a YouTube channel or something. Start doing reviews. Start reviewing some of the balls that you get, um, some of the bowling balls that you have. And be specific. Talk about the details. Talk about what you see. Talk about how a ball benefits you. You know, unfortunately, in this era of bowlers, if you don't, if you're not a higher ability bowler, if you don't have honor scores, if you haven't proven in some way, shape, or form, that you are the you have the ability to kind of guide people nobody's really going to listen to you you know if you've never bowled 300 if you've never bowled 800 if you've never you know um had success of any kind and you're just trying to get on staff because you just want free bowling balls i'm sorry to tell you but you, you've got no chance you know unless you work in a pro shop because then you're showing value by you have influence of people who come into the shop. People, of course, are going to buy bowling balls. They're going to ask you opinions, so you have the ability to push certain products. This is why you see so many people who are just pro shop guys on staff, even though some of them probably aren't any, even any good at bowling. Some of them have probably never had honor scores or anything like that. Now, honor scores don't really mean much today because they're kind of a dime a dozen right now. And this isn't made to mock anybody this isn't made to you know make anybody feel bad about themselves this is just an honest truthful this is what it takes to be um, on staff with somebody if you don't have the ability to push product you're of little to no value to any company now just getting on social media and making posts isn't enough does your post reach people does your post get out there are you willing to put in the effort to share it to multiple groups and continue to grow and challenge the platforms 
um, algorithms to make sure you get the views. Are you able to do that? You know, so if you're not getting a few thousand views in every video or more, then I mean, what kind of value are you really showing? And if you're just making simple posts with a one shot clip, this is, you know, here's my blue vibe, my ocean vibe. Uh, and you're showing a single strike and then just saying this ball is going to be a staple in my bag. What kind of value does that have? That means nothing. Like that's one of the worst posts people can make is just making a one shot you know, short clip video and saying, oh my gosh, this ball is amazing. Well, if you look at all of their posts from any bowling ball that's come out before, those are the exact same posts they've made about every single ball. Oh, this is a must have. Oh, this ball has got perfect continuation. Oh, watch how this ball drives through the pins. You know, how many people out there are actually honest about their, you know, about their, their reviews? It's hard because most people are on staff that are doing reviews. I might be the only person or one of the only people who have somewhat of a following that doesn't have to be trying to sell bowling balls. I don't have to try and say that every bowling ball is good. You know, I don't have to sit there and make every ball look out, look like it's, you know, the cat's meow, like it's the best ball in the world or the best thing that's coming out and everybody needs it. I don't have to do that. That's where I show my value. That's why my reviews are different. That's why my reviews are to the point and simply throwing shots, watching the ball go down the lane and you get what you get. You know, that's why I don't cut my reviews. That's why I don't edit my reviews. You know, you'll see shot after shot after shot, whether they're good, they're bad, they're ugly, I don't care. You're going to see what the ball does based on good shots and bad shots. Some reviews look really, really good because I just happened to throw eight good shots in a row and they all struck. It turns out that ball wasn't very good, maybe. You know, it just you don't know for sure, but I'm going to tell you what I see. You know, you have to have the ability to tell people what you see out of those bowling balls. You have to have the ability to be honest and say, look, this ball's reading here really well. This ball's not reading here very well. I can't imagine this ball's going to be very good playing further in. Let's try it. Go play further in. Watch it delay. Watch it bail. Watch it do a lot of different things that it probably shouldn't be doing. And be honest about it and say, see, I don't think this ball is going to be great for me here, but I'm going to be able to play with this ball over here. I can play straighter with it, and it's going to be money. That's okay. You can do that. Even as a staffer, I think a lot of these companies would appreciate that. You know, I don't think companies are going to come out and say, oh, you need to sell these and make everybody think that they're going to be good across the entire lane, that they're going to be perfect for no matter what the situation is. Because that's what they, I mean, a lot of companies are trying to do is create bowling balls that are good for multiple areas, multiple, you know, very versatile bowling balls. That's the whole idea. That's the object behind creating bowling balls, you know, but honestly, you don't see it very often. A lot of times you see bowling balls that are good in one part of the lane and not in the other. It's very rare to see a bowling ball that's actually good in one part of the lane and in, in the other part of the lane. You know, it's just it's not a thing that happens very often. So when it comes to making social media posts, I think the shorter the better. Short posts, straight to the point. Here's what I'm seeing. You know, give detail about it. It reads the middle of the lane very well. You know, doesn't bail. It still picks up down lane even after it reads the middle of the lane. You know, when I moved in, it didn't do this. When I moved out, you know, whatever it may be. Just give a little bit of detail about the ball reaction. Don't just say it's a must-have. Don't make a post saying it's a must-have. It's staple in my bag. Look at this one strike. That is so annoying. That's so frustrating. You know, um, I like the idea of the Motive Monday stuff because it they reward these staffers for making a shot, a post of some sort about a bowling ball. If I was the motive manager, I'd be telling these guys, like, look, don't just post a shot and say this is a shot with this ball. You know, it's great. Go get yourself one. No, I want you to make a sh You need to give me some detail. You know, why is this ball good? What does it do for you? What does it do different from this ball compared to something else? Compare it to another ball. Give me some detail. Do something. You know, make it to where people can understand and relate. Tell me the layout. You know, you just kind of go into a little bit of detail. Now, I don't go into, with my videos and stuff, I don't go into a ton of detail about the numbers of the bowling balls and stuff like that. Because at that point, that's not what we're looking for. We're simply looking at ball reaction. You know, I'll give you the details of you know, what the layout is, which is pretty much going to be the same on every ball. And because of that, you can really tell the difference from ball to ball. This solid ball is a lot different than this pearl ball because it's you know reacting in this part of the lane different than that ball did in this part of the lane. That's just how it goes. You know, so if you're going to try and get on staff, I, I mean... 
it, it's important to be having yourself out there. It's important to be bowling tournaments. It's important to be having success, making cuts, and building a name as somebody who is a competitor. I think that's a very good thing. Um, but the most important thing is building a social media platform. And the easiest and best way is just creating video. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm not good in front of the camera. I don't like, you know, putting myself in front of camera. Well, <laughs> suck it up, Buttercup, because if you're not going to want to do that, you're not going to be on staff. It's, I mean, it's as simple as that. In today's age, if you're not making video, if you're not doing reviews, if you're not talking about bowling balls, if you're not talking about products, what do you, what do you have to offer? Honestly, what, what are you going to do for the company other than take a picture of a bowling ball or one video shot and say this ball's great? Sorry, we got people doing that that aren't even on staff. We don't have to give people bowling balls to do that. Nobody has to give you a bowling ball to do that. People already do that and they don't even care. They just want the recognition and pretty much because they're trying to build a platform to get to where they can to get on staff. You're not doing that. <laughs> so you need to go make sure you're building some kind of a platform. You know, whatever it is, get on TikTok. TikTok, TikTok is one of the biggest things right now. Although I don't use my bowling one very often, uh, I should use it more. But I've already built a YouTube platform, so that is my main focus: is continuing to grow that platform as much as possible. You know, but if you don't have a platform, TikTok's probably the place to start. You know, you could do so many different things on there. That's probably the best place to start, and you can build a following super fast there. You know, if you can quickly get yourself to you know, 10, 20, 30,000 followers on there, you probably could uh, show that off and, and use that as leverage to create a staff position somewhere. I don't think that would be an issue. You know, if somebody came to me and showed me that they had 30,000 followers on a social media platform and showed me that they were doing videos talking about bowling balls and different things and, you know, how they went to this pro shop and they did this and they did that, I'm probably going to look at that like, all right, you got people listening there. Can you post a link for sales? Can you, you know, redirect people to buy bowling balls in certain areas? Like, that's a pretty big deal. That's a big thing. You know, that's kind of why I do what I do with Bowler X. Bowler X, that's how I created that opportunity with Bowler X is because I created the influence that I could sell bowling balls, that I could show people which bowling balls were good and which bowling balls were bad. Which one of you online retailers want me to push my product to you? Or which one of you online retailers want me to push the product towards your site? I'm showing you my value. I can push people to your website. You show me what that's worth to you. Bowler X did. So I've been working with them ever since. That's that's the whole idea. Create create yourself a platform to where you can show value on how you can sell product. And I'm telling you right now, the easiest way to do it is just getting comfortable in front of a camera. Maybe you make your first couple of videos and you don't even post them public. You know, maybe you just make a couple of videos just keep them private, just to kind of look at, keep going back over it, trying to figure out what you can improve on. How do you get better at speaking? How do you get better at talking in front of the camera? How do you get better without having to have just, the, and the other thing I'm gonna tell you right now, I gotta stop myself. Don't write a script. Don't sit there reading from a piece of paper. Just spit it out from the top of your head. You know, like, like what I'm doing right now. I'm literally just speaking based on my knowledge, based on my experience. I'm not, I don't have anything in front of me. I'm not talking about anything or I'm not seeing any, you know, I don't have a, a billboard in front of me or a teleprompter that I'm reading from. I'm simply speaking from the top of my mind. And that's what you need to do. Now, not everybody's great at that, but you need to get better at it because people want to hear real. People want to hear honesty. They don't want to hear a script. They don't want to feel like they're watching a, a commercial. It doesn't need to be commercial production. We don't need that. We want honesty. We want to see real review. We want to see real reaction. I don't want to hear the monotone voices of, today I bring you the altered reality. This ball is really good. Make sure to visit www. I mean, that just don't do that. Like, I know that sounds ridiculous, but seriously, don't do that. That is the worst type of video. Maybe I'm alone on that. I don't think I am, but that is the worst type of video you can make is something so monotone and, and scripted like that. Scripted videos and stuff are just awful. So don't do that. But I just wanted to give you these few little insights there. You know, take a, just go take a look around, look at some of the staffers posts and stuff. And you'll notice, you'll see them now, now that I, you, I've noticed, I've told you about these things, you're going to look at somebody and you'll be like, oh, 
That's a post JR said not to do. <laughs> so you'll notice it now. So just be careful when you're out there, but make your platforms, build a platform, try to show people out your worth. Just do what you got to do. Maybe you create your own website. It's cheap, you know, 10 bucks a month. You can have your own website, you know, jrraymond.com, whatever it may be. You can lead people there. Even I haven't done that part yet. I've got some things in the works on there. But again, the reason I haven't done that is because I focus solely on YouTube for the first, you know, for everything else. Now I can start to branch out a little bit. Now I'm going to branch out. I'm going to create a website. I'm going to create some different things and put and, and, and integrate all of it together and really create a huge influence. So that's all I got. I'm going to get out of here. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you like this, make sure to share this. Get this around. Share this for everybody so they can see it. Um, hit the like button. Smash that like button. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care.